right, know, right. the tech, the tech world kind of took over and stuff. So, but it's it's different. I mean, it's different. It's like a really small. City. So how's it going so far? I I don't know, man. Um, I I'd say it's going really well. Yeah. I learned a lot about my recording process the last time, the last record. Um, I like to make a, a lot of things at once. Um, and the, I guess the album kind of gets worked on in layers. Yeah. So I have a bunch of tracks, some that were unfinished things that I kind of wanted on the last record, but that are going to make on this. Um, I had a really awesome recording session with the drummer Marcus Gilmore mm -hmm. a few, like a month and a half ago. A lot of that material is going to make it on the record and will probably be like four totally new things I do within the next two months. But um, I don't really have that much stuff that's totally finished, but I have a bunch of stuff that's getting close. So right. that's kind of how I made the last record. Like the last few layers on all the tracks will be in the last month or so of production. And it took a while, right? Like more than three years from when I knew it. Yeah, a lot of that was just um, kind of the growing pains of learning how to make a record though. Right. Um, <clears throat> The songs that made it to the record, most of them were like two or three years sitting for two or three years. Yeah. Um, most of the stuff I worked on within the last year didn't make the record because mm. um, I kept <clears throat> kind of starting over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that get, it reached a point when that was just an endless cycle. And, you know, I just had to learn, you know, you just got to choose <laughs> to finish this group of songs and right. just do it. But, you know, I learned so much about the recording process and how what it takes to finish a record as the main driving force and you're surrounding yourself with all these different people like producers especially like Flylo for example so you're just like learning from them and trying to take from them as much as you can and putting it together for your record I don't know I mean it wasn't quite like that I don't I have like a, a, a pretty loose friendship with Flylo yeah you know, he lived in LA I made this whole record in New York mm. um, he's a really amazing guy every time we've hung out it was definitely cool vibe but I didn't really spend any time in the studio mm -hmm. like learning how he does stuff um, so it's all mostly innate in terms of no production. I've just I've just been making music since like 1998 <laughs> 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 but I, this is my first solo record I just put out but I was yeah. in probably seven or eight bands before mm -hmm. all that so really um, I started making beats in high school <clears throat> At some point, I was like an MC in a band. At some point, I was the keyboard player in a hip hop group. I was in kind of an experimental fusion group for a while. Um, then I got back into production. I really developed my beatboxing at a certain point. My yeah. first EP was called Broken Vibes, and all the drums on that EP were beatbox stuff. So, really, it was the process of just developing different ways of being creative that all kind of finally reached a point where I felt like I could put out a, a totally right. solo project. Um, but did, did anxiety play a part in that in the process? Like, were you like at times unsure of what you're doing? Yeah, I was totally unsure at times. Yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> I wanted to do, there were things I wanted to do in this last record that I just hadn't put the time in um, to be comfortable. Uh, you know, I wanted to sing a lot on this last record, but I hadn't really been a singer. I'd been a producer and instrumentalist for so much longer, so it feels weird to have one part of your um, creativity feel like it's really advanced and you've right. put, you know, 10, 15 years into it and then something that's like brand new. Yeah. So that was a hold up for a while. Yeah. I think I wanted to do a little too much. And so, um, you know, reaching out to all the guests and people that are on the record sure. when I finally decided, like, I'm So that encouraged you to actually sing as well? So. Yeah, I mean, I did sing on two songs on the record eventually, but um, and on the new one, I'm kind of in that same place where yeah. I want to sing on a lot of it. Mm -hmm. We'll see if I can really pull off a full record or if those be guests on it. I, I still don't know at this point. So for the new album, like, how different is it from the first one? Because I know the first one is pretty dense production. Um, I'm focusing more on song structure. Mm -hmm. um, this record was <clears throat> really based on me jamming and doing a lot of soundscape-y type stuff and then making loops and layering things yeah. on top of each other. And it was really loop-based. Um, I didn't write a lot of those songs with the intro, chorus, verse, you know, chorus, vamp. 
I didn't I didn't write the structure first. I right. kind of let the production process. It's quite free flowing. Yeah, and I think that it worked on the record. It had a vibe, but um, there's certain we we a certain weakness on the record of not super defined sections. Um, I still want some of that you know, kind of free flowing stuff because I think yeah. that's a part of my vibe. But I'm I'm trying to really step up my songwriting and structure. On so, so what's been helping you to do that? Just listening to other stuff. Um, Discipline as well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm writing out chords and melodies mm -hmm. first, yeah. and then building production around that. Mm -hmm. um, that it hasn't always been the most natural way for me to work, but uh, you know, I'm just trying to, with each project, I want to kind of get better at certain nice. elements. So, like, um, in, uh, for like collaborators on the album, could you tell us a bit like who is working with you? Oh, is it going to be mainly solo? Well, <clears throat> just like with the last one, I'm not really reaching out to the collaborators until everything's in the 75 to 80 percent done. Right. Um, there are some people I've worked with, but I kind of don't want to say because I don't know if the songs will be on the <laughs> record or not. The only person I know is definitely going to be on a lot is Marcus Gilmore, who's nice. the drummer who um, was on the last one a lot. Um, we're going to start touring. We'll probably do the main tour for this record, like the whole whole time together. So when are you looking to release the album? I'm looking to turn it in in June, yeah. uh, so a fall release. Um, and you know, I have some other things, some other singles and songs I'm working on that should come out maybe before then as well. Sweet. Is it is it okay if I talk a bit about your dad as well? Yeah, Just of about your relationship. And so, basically, like he came last year as well. And he did a really good show. But as an artist yourself. What, what do you feel he has passed on to you? Well, we have kind of a funny musical relationship. Um, I kind of didn't realize I wanted to do music until I was a teenager. And at that point, I was really just into hip hop. Yeah. So the way I got into music wasn't really compatible to how he learned the music, mm -hmm. which was, um, he grew up around everyone playing jazz and, you know, people mastering instruments and sitting in and jamming with each other and kind of judging musicians based on their chops and their feel and all this stuff. Where I, I grew up listening to producers that were like sampling and chopping and, and right. working with machines and, you know, making beats and stuff. So for a long time, I I didn't have, we didn't have the same musical language yeah. to really talk about. Because of the environment that you grew in, yeah. But also just the technique, like if I gave him like an MPC, yeah. <laughs> like he would not even know like what that is. Yeah. Um, and also just a lot of hip hop production is sample and loop based. And for someone coming from a more of a jazz background, mm -hmm. it kind of doesn't make sense to hear things loop. Yeah. It, that doesn't sound like musically interesting mm -hmm. initially. Whereas for me, there's this whole world of like nerdy beat maker guys are like yeah. oh that sample is so rare exactly, he found yeah. that and he flipped it this way like the way of thinking about music is totally different um, but as I've now been doing music for like 20 years yeah. I've really brought the live instrumentation element into my production mm -hmm. and then I've gone back and most of the music that's inspired me is actually the stuff he grew up listening to in the 70s yeah so stuff like Miles Davis and Herbie Hancock all that stuff nice. that ended up being my favorite music so um, we have a connect we have the connection of the music we love and then we actually just had our first duo show yeah. like a few weeks ago we never nice. actually played a gig together it was in America it was in yeah. LA yeah so and that was crazy because it actually did it felt really natural and it was um it was a cool moment so what songs do you guys play it was an improvised <laughs> show um, I I actually worked on a few songs of his he didn't know it so I like right brought some interpretations of his stuff but it was mostly improvised so there was that kind of jazz element he, he's a big improviser that's like his he has a super gift for it um, and I've really worked on improvisational beat making so we actually have now this whole world to like collaborate in it's kind of cool. but does he look towards hip-hop as well like you do or is he no. just more sticking in his own like way he grew up in terms of music he like listens to all the same records he's like listening to my whole life all right. but he all he stays in touch with new music basically on youtube mm -hmm. like he's always finding new 
players and like watching clips, and then he sees a lot of live performances, much more than he's not like checking for Kendrick's new record or yeah. he doesn't really go searching for new stuff. But um, he's still like really into whenever he hears someone that kind of blows him away as a musician. Nice. Yeah. Who was the last artist that blew him away in that aspect? Um, he really likes Snarky Puppy. Oh yeah. Yeah, because they, you know, they're on that. They performed during last year, so yeah. yeah. Like they got the, the mega chops, you yeah, know, and kind of that that vibe is really into that. Sweet. So I want to ask about like your touring. So like you toured last? Did you tour last year? Yeah. Yes. You did. So I guess for you touring, like, what was the hardest part of like keeping up with like the touring life? I'm a really easygoing person. It's oh, yeah? not the hardest part is just your body kind of does reach a limit of yeah. just exhaustion because mm -hmm. I've, I've been touring for a long time since like 2003 but yeah. the longest tour I ever went on was probably two weeks mm -hmm. and um, this last the main tour for the record was like 40 shows in 50 days or something and um, and it started in Japan and then went back to the States then went to Europe then went to Australia so halfway through that tour my body was like you know what's going on here mm -hmm. and, I felt like I almost fainted at some point. I had a few days off and I tried to go out and like just have a normal day. Yeah. And it was actually taking a day off where it kind of all caught up to me. But you know, it's it's really even though it was physically hard, I had never put out a solo record before, so there was like this really intense joy feeling like I did it. You know, I've never actually been on a tour to support a record. Yeah. Uh, on my record, so it was a, it was overall an amazing experience. So I'm guessing that's like the biggest thing that you take from touring. I guess like having the confidence to perform your own solo material. So I guess let's just say like your upcoming tour. What are you looking forward to learn from that? Well, having Marcus on the tour, yeah, he's like a master level musician. Like he tours with like Chick Corea. And Is he performing tonight with you? No, he's not performing tonight. Um, we kind of tour here and there right now but we're gonna we're setting up the main tour together nice. um, that's kind of stretching my you know chops because yeah. I hate feeling like a total scrub playing keys with him because he can he can play with any piano he, he's played with 90% of all the best jazz musicians in the world at this point maybe not maybe I'm exaggerating but but he's just really that good <laughs> he's really and he's really humble about it. Like yeah. he's crazy talented. He can hang with anybody, but he's just playing music. He's just having fun. And we more connect on the openness side of it. Like I'm really comfortable improvising, and I'm I've worked really hard on kind of mastering getting cool sounds out of synthesizers. Um, I don't know about mastering, but that's kind of my thing. So I I can really do some interesting synth work and when we improvise there is a really wide open scope and in a weird way I think some of my limitations paired with his like unlimited yeah. chops kind of finds a cool middle ground where um, I kind of force him to, to like be in a certain amount of structure and he forces me to try to hang with him so I'm gonna grow a lot from that tour yeah. I, I realize that you're like hesitant to use the word mastering because what do you see like in terms of your skill as a performer, do you just see it as like a constant, never ending rule? No, I just I, you know I grew up I, I grew up around people that I do consider masters. Um, the thing that I've put the most time into that I feel like I really know what I'm doing is working with production techniques and you know, certain people their instrument was the MPC. Yeah. I've worked mostly on Ableton for the last 10 plus years, but I also collect a lot of vintage gear. So just as a producer and knowing how to structure things and manipulate sounds within the production context is my biggest skill. Um, but when I'm talking about just straight live playing, yeah. uh, I've never 100% focused on my chops. Um, so that's why I just gotta not use the word master like <laughs> but I'm, I'm guessing eventually you see yourself at least getting better at it the more you tour um, yeah so. I'm really looking forward to getting better at keys and vocals mostly um, I 
feel like that I have so much room to grow in those areas that I feel like I'll be able to stay excited about music for a long time. Nice. Okay, I'll like to see you in action.